Welcome back to Hi-Fi University. Today we're going to talk about uh, cables, something dear to my heart since I work for a cable manufacturer and I've spent about uh, the last 20 years developing cables for many companies. It's a controversial subject. A lot of people believe wires wire. Any wire will work. Well, lamp cord, why would I spend money in investment? How can it be engineered? Because it's not easily measured. So I came up with kind of an example and experiment to show that there's many different facets to cable transmission more than just moving a, a signal. Most people think of it simply as just uh, there's three things involved, uh, capacitance, inductance, and resistance, an LCR network, but it's much more complex than that because we're dealing with physics. So one of the bigger interactions is in magnetics. When you drive a signal through a piece of wire, it creates a magnetic field, almost like circular little hurricanes, tornadoes, and, and, it, and it causes something called an eddy current just like you have currents in tornadoes, eddy current resistance or magnetic braking, which really can affect group delay, timing, and smear small details. I came up with an experiment to show you. Uh, in our cables, and most cables in high-end audio, we use high purity copper. At audience, we use OCC copper, which is Ono Continuous Cast, which is the highest purity copper you can find. But to, just to show you, I have a piece of copper that would represent our uh, conductor, and a piece of steel ball. So there's no magnetic, it's non-fair, it's no magnetic interaction. But when I drop it, of course it drops quickly because it drops, as Newton said, 32 feet per second. Now I'm gonna drop a magnetic ball. But just to show you, copper's still not magnetic. But when I drop it through this, that's where it creates eddy currents. And that's where you have eddy current resistance. And now you can see how slowly it drops through that uh, tube, there's eddy current resistance within there. But this is a fairly thin piece of copper. The diameter affects eddy currents. The bigger the diameter, the heavier the di diameter, uh, the more uh, eddy current resistance you have. So then again, more sonic artifacts, more group delay, more timing smear. So I'm gonna take the same material, a copper pipe, but this one is uh, much thicker, much more, uh, has much more mass to it and it's about a tenfold more resistance, same magnet. So that shows you that wire is not just wire. It, it has many interactions that people aren't considering. One is mass. Uh, the higher mass you have in a cable, uh, the more eddy current resistance. And a lot of people think big fat cables are great, and that's okay if you're welding or you have a speaker that's very low efficiency and you need a big amplifier that's 30 amps of current, that, that may have its place. But in most situations, you don't need that much mass. And actually the mass is a problem. One of the analogy people have is a, a faucet opened all the way up in a pipe. And they're acting like the amplifier's putting all this power and if your pipe's too little, you have a problem. But the reality is very, very rarely do you have the faucet opened all the way? It's usually at a trickle. And now you have this big pipe and a trickle, and that causes way more problems than actually if your pipe was uh, too small, because now you have uh, uh, linearity and pressure um, that's not equalized. So what we do is try to find a cable that uses high purity copper, uh, but it's low mass. Um, that's what we've been working with, and I just came up with an experiment to show you why in our field, we develop the cables we develop is based on the physics. We have low eddy current, low mass cable designs. 